kind of reminds me of that show. What was the name of it? What if? What would you do? Let me give you a scenario. If you were sitting in Kroger parking lot and you noticed a young lady sitting right over there up against her car with a baby stroller and she had those little earbuds in where you can't, she can't hear anything that's going on, sitting there on her cell phone, oblivious to what's going on around her. And just right up there at the top of the hill was a delivery truck. Man whipped right in there. They're always in such a hurry. He jumps out of his truck, leaves it in neutral, and you see that truck slowly coming down to her, and she ain't got a clue what's going on. What would you do? You knew that they, she's going to get crushed and the baby's going to get crushed. Would you intervene? Everybody shaking their head yes. Yeah. You definitely would. That's the right thing to do. Let me give you one more. If you lived in a neighborhood, a suburban neighborhood, and just about every neighborhood now has security bars up on the windows and the doors where you can't get in, won't let the people in. You knew that they had five children on this side of the house that stayed in this bedroom. And you knew during the winter months that they had an old space heater that they put in there, keeping them babies warm at night. You knew it was an old one. Went really in really good shape. And then one night you happen to look outside and you seen that thing catch on fire. You seen flames coming up. What would you do? I would be running over there screaming at the top of my lungs, beating on the door. There's fire coming. They're about to die. They're about to get burned up. They're about to suffer a death that you can't imagine your flesh melting off of your skin. I know y'all might be thinking that's a little extreme. The first one scenario I made up. Second scenario was actually happening. Back in 1996, the five children, they got burned up. You'd be screaming where they wouldn't get burned up. I'm on a roll, let me give you one more. How many people you witnessed to last week? How many people have you shared the gospel with? Last month. Okay, last year. No, no. Just like you were saying earlier, Sister Ann, you're always right with me. You showed me about the gospel and your, your scripture <laughs> earlier. And just like now, like she was saying, it, it's now a time more than ever we should be letting our light shine yes. like never before. I mean your light, your gospel, the Father that's in you. As we live him and shine to those around us. Do y'all remember when you, I, I don't, about people that's been in the faith for a long time, do you remember when you actually really, I know Sister Tracy, when you first really got saved, mm -hmm. how good you felt? Or have you ever been around somebody that's, that you see them the next day, you weren't in service with them, but you see them the next day, you're like, what in the world? Like, and some espresso this morning? What is going on? They just there's a joy that's over them. There's a happiness that's over you. There's a peace that's over you. There's a a calmness that you just can't explain. When you first when you first truly get saved, when you first receive the gospel, when you first accept Yeshua as your Savior, don't be like a, a child with a brand new toy hiding that, not telling nobody about it. Because if you remember when you first got saved, at least me, I didn't even know how to. I didn't know what to do or anything, but I just wanted to tell everybody. When I first truly got saved, I wanted to tell everybody, man, you got to go to this place. you got to get, get some of this. Because I don't know what I'm feeling, but it feels good. You've got to share the gospel. Turn with me to Mark chapter 16. 
Mark 16, and I'm going to read 16, 15, and 16. Chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. Father, we thank you for today, Father. Father, we thank you for this congregation. Father, we thank you for these like-minded believers that are here with us. Father, we thank you for our, this, this is our family. This is our true family, Father. Father, we are so blessed and honored to be able to gather on your Sabbaths. Father, let everything that comes forth today, Father, let it be of you and only you, Father. Father, bring back to the remembrance of the things that I've studied. Father, we just thank you again today, Father. We give you all the praise, all the glory, Father. Through your Son, we pray, Amen. Amen. Turn with me to uh, Luke 10. I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures as usual. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Sir? Rid yourself of selfishness. How to rid yourself of selfishness. Luke 10. Verse 2. Brother Chris said it earlier. Then he said unto them, The harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. Therefore pray the master of the harvest to send workers into his harvest. Like I was saying earlier, don't hide your, your faith. Don't hide the, the gospel. Don't hide the true gospel. We're the, the scripture says we're the salt of the earth. Let your light shine. People should be running to you. People should be able to see, man, there's something going on with that guy. That's your opportunity to share with them. Matthew chapter 5. Give you one more of what I'm talking about here. Matthew chapter 5. 14 and 15 reads. You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a lampstand. And it shines to all those in the house. Every time I read that, that reminds me of that, that song. This I know. Little light of mine. Exactly. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Exactly. Hide it under a bushel? No. That's right there in, I believe it was 15, where you don't hide it under a basket. Everybody just agreed on them scenarios that I gave you. You would intervene. You would do something. We need to be praying that the Father would take the scales off our eyes and we would actually get spiritualized. I've been praying for that. And it hurts when you see people at the gas station. And if you just go anywhere and just look around, they're done. They're on their way to a fiery death. They're going to be burning. And nobody's telling them anything. There's even Christians now that I hate to break your heart. They're going to be right there with them. But it's, it's up to us to just plant a seed. That's all we have to do. We don't have to get into meaningless debates with everybody. 
We don't have to get into arguments with everybody. All we have to do is just spread the simple, true gospel and plant that seed. And guess what? Yeah, we'll water it. Set up our spirit will water it, yes. and it will grow. Yes. It will mature. You can't. When I'm saying you can't, you can't go up to somebody that doesn't have a clue, and you just throw up on them about the Torah and everything else, and you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do it. Just give them the basics. What Paul say? 1 Corinthians 3, 1, 1 and 2. And I, brothers, was not able to speak to you as to spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Messiah. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it and even now, you were not able. That applies to what I'm talking about here too. I don't want nobody thinking I'm taking that out of context where he's actually speaking to the church and about the strife and the envy and all this. This applies to you. You can't. You got to start with the basics with people. Yeah. And like I said, you don't have to. You you don't have to be a Bible scholar to share the news with them. You don't have to be scared to go talk to people. Just in casual conversations with just the lady at the checkout line at Kroger, bagging it up. Opportunities, I, I, I'm telling you, will present themselves. And that's what we got to pray to have discernment. And all we got to do is say the right little thing. He's going to put you in those little situations. I'm not telling you to go out and start a stand on the corner and do a street, a street preaching ministry and screaming and yelling at people. If you feel led to do that, call me. I will go right there with you. I'll stand right there beside you and back you up 110%. And I'm not playing. I, if you feel led to do that, we'll do it. And it begins in our homes. That's exactly right. You got to start with the basics with, with your average Joe. You got to let them know to, to turn from their wicked ways, to repent. Truly repent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can't do like most of these people are doing and just, well, here, let's just pray this sinner's prayer and you're forgiven and here, just repeat after me. I wouldn't suggest you do that because then they're not going to be truly repentant. But Just let them know what the Messiah came and did for us. Quote John 3, 16 now. That's the most popular, most popular verse around. It said every ball, I don't care what ball game, you go to a hockey game, a football game, there's somebody going to be in the stand holding that up. John 3, 16. What's it say? Is it up there? That's right. That's just something simple. All you've got to do, if you can get to these people and if you can just prick their conscience, get them thinking. What about 1 John? 1 John chapter 1, verse, verse 9. Somebody read that out loud. Go ahead, Lisa. If we confess our sins, he is trustworthy and righteous to forgive us the sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That's right. Let them know that, like I said before, let them know that Yeshua came. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional because I, I, I remember doing, going through all this. Let them know that Yeshua came and I get the image of passion of the Christ in my hand because I hit it because I can actually get a visual. Mm -hmm. Let him know that he came and died for a, a sinner like me. A wicked sinner like me. That's in Romans 8 too. What is the payment for sin? That's in Romans 6.23. The wages of sin 
is death. The payment for sin is death. That's if, if you sin, that's your payment. Eternal death too, not just physical death. Not just once, for the rest of your life. Yes, sir. Now, when I said that earlier about, about Christians or believers, this is what my daughter was saying earlier. We've had a lot of interactions with some people past few weeks, past couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on in these people's minds that think that they're going to make it just because they're good people. I don't have to obey the law. I ain't talking about the Torah. Talk about the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Your basic stuff is here. I don't have to do that. I'm just a good person. Uh, I, all I have to do is love. That blows my mind. How do you know if you're doing wrong if you don't have a guideline to go by? If you love your feet like commandments. Thank you, sister. All right. Let me ask you this. Did you know that spitting on the sidewalk's illegal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you know if you spit on somebody, that is considered assault? Mm -hmm. $2,500 fine. Mm -hmm. One year in prison if you are convicted. I know a lot of people don't know that, but I grew up knowing that because my grandpa was an Atlanta policeman. I know that seems silly, but think about that. If I'm up here at the park doing community service, I'm out there weed eating, trying to be a good guy, and I spit on the sidewalk, and a policeman happens to walk by, and he's not in a real good mood that day, he can write me a ticket. But yet I'm out there doing a good thing. I'm going to go fight this ticket. I'm going before the judge. Judge, I was out there doing a good thing. I, I, I'm sorry, but I mean, I'm a good person. Exactly. I was doing a very good thing. I, I, I didn't know this was going on. What's the judge going to do? He's going to uphold the law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Say that loud, Sister Anne. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Now back to Scripture. What does Romans 3.20 say? For no one will be justified in the sight by the works of the law because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. The knowledge of sin comes through the law. There's going to be a lot of people shocked on Judgment Day. I mean, a lot of people are going to be shocked. Let me read you something out of the, uh, y'all know how I love my, my Bible dictionary. This is where I was going through my studies and I was uh, studying righteousness. And then when I went through righteousness, then it directed me to ethics. So then I went to ethics. Like the Old Testament, love is a strong motivator. However, love does not take the place of the law. Love is not itself the law, it is a how word, but it will never tell us what we are to do. We have to have something to go by. What is the, Brother Rick, what is the definition of sin? Let me give you, a, can I give you a Charles Spurgeon quote? Does everybody know who Charles Spurgeon is? Yep. He was only a guy back in the late 1800s that he started at a real young age preaching. But at the age of 22, he was preaching to about 10,000 people every Sunday. And not to mention what he was doing every other day of the week. 
Charles Spurgeon quotes, this is one of his famous quotes, I do not believe that man can preach the gospel who does not preach the law. And this ain't coming from a messianic belief. See, I know all of us know this, but the scriptures have been watered down over the years. That's right. mm -hmm. And that goes along with the gospel too. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they don't want to offend nobody. They don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Mm -hmm. yes. Just like them babies in there getting burned, you know, you can imagine that. I know people in here that their flesh would have been melting off their hands trying to rip the bars off and warn them, you're about to burn up. Mm -hmm. You're going to die if you don't stop what you're doing. Or do you know what's coming to you? Yes, Sister Ann, I'm sorry. You, you had your hand oh, up. I was, just, I was just saying that um, I recently listened to it was a preacher, he was in Tennessee here, and my cousin sent me the link for it, and I've seen others, and preachers are aware that, you know what, the way the world is and everything, we've got to quit feeding them pablum. We have to be starting to preach the truth. We have to put our people on fire. Now is the time. Now's the time. And they're really saying, we need you as Christians to be bold and stand up for truth because that's come the on, only sister. way that anything can be turned or any protection can come for the people throughout the you know the world who are believers. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Because for so long it's been watered down. They just want to mm -hmm. It's sad to say this, but I don't I mind. I will spew you out. You're neither hot or cold. You're, you know, lukewarm, and I will spew you out of my mouth. Yes, ma'am. But modern day pastors, all they want to do is fill them pews. Mm -hmm. They don't want to offend nobody. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get nobody upset. I feel mm -hmm. good. It, it ain't a motivational class that you go to if you're going to service on Sunday, if you're going to service on Saturday, or if you're coming on creation calendar mm -hmm. my goodness my goodness my goodness y'all remember what I said just a minute ago about spitting on the sidewalk even though I was oblivious to that that was illegal but yet I still mm -hmm. broke the law mm -hmm. what's Matthew 7 21 through 23 read Read it out loud to us, Brother Chris. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. I don't care what version of scripture you have. You can have the KJV, the Common Christian Standard Bible. That last part will either say lawlessness or lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you have to, and that's lawlessness. Yes. I, hon I, I honestly, th uh, well, I know. There's going to be a lot of people that day thinking that they were good people and that all they had to do is just talk. That one gentleman keeps sticking out in my mind. Basically, you don't even have to look at the scripture. You don't have to follow the Sabbath. You don't have to do anything. You're just here to love. It's all been nailed. I'm just here to love everybody. It ain't the 60s no more. I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't scripture back in the 60s mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. Again, Romans 3.20 nails it. How do you know if you're breaking the law? 
because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. And everybody thinks poor old Paul was preaching against the law and doing away with the law. Brother Chris, I'm sorry, I don't have this. I didn't give this to you, but some, get Romans 3.31. What is, what, this is Brother Paul talking. I hope I'm remembering right. Somebody read Romans 3.31. The reader makes way for lost faith. Yahweh forgive it, yea, he established the law. Mm -hmm. What's your version say, huh? Um, Speak the, up. The 31, right? Romans 3, 31. Does it follow that we abolish Torah by this trusting? Heaven forbid. On the contrary, we confirm the Torah. We hold the Torah up. Mm -hmm. we, we keep it. And I know a lot of people get confused by what we do. This ain't in my notes neither, I'm sorry, but I, I want to say it that way people at home can understand what's, what's going on. Yeah. I keep the Torah because my father kept the Torah. The Messiah kept the Torah. I love his laws. Mm -hmm. And what you got to understand, I, I'm not, the Torah is not going to, keeping the Torah ain't getting me to, to the kingdom. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do the tour because I want to represent my father. Yes. Yes. Because when I was baptized, I came up a new man. Mm -hmm. And it says in the scripture that that's the day I gained my citizenship. Yes. Yes. That's the day I became an ambassador for the kingdom. Yes. With that being said, I'm a representative of the kingdom and I've got to hold a high standard and learn and loving his law is what he did. I love his law. Yeah. I want to do the best of my ability to strive for perfection. Yeah. Because everybody's looking at you. You've got to be an example. We've had, I, I'm not, I don't want to ever sound like I'm boasting or anything, but we've had situations come up the past few weeks where people were coming up. I, I knew there's something different about y'all. There's something that just sticks out. And that led into conversations, and, and I'm, I'm so blessed. I, I, thank you, Father. We got it. We got to tell everybody what's going on. I'm telling you, I, I, I can't describe what I've been going through, Sister Teresa. I mean, it, it's like I'm walking by and I'm looking at people and I can, it's like I can it just feel a hurt. It's going out to them. They ain't got a chance. They don't know. Nobody's ever told them. Back to the law. People that don't believe you're supposed to be keeping any kind of law, any kind of moral law, any kind of tour or anything, do you not realize that go to the courthouse? There used to be, I don't know if there is anymore, but there used to be the Ten Commandments up on every one of them. I think they've been yes. stripping yeah. those. Do you realize that lawyers and judges, they all, when they do their little oath, they got that little Lady Liberty? Lady Justice, I'm sorry, right there. <clears throat> Brother Chris, you got her? Do y'all know what she's representing? Everything's mimicked after Scripture. No, this is, this is what is in courthouses. This is what, um, when, like I said, when the lawyers and the judges and all take their oath, it's, it's Lady Justice. This is her. The sword is punishment that's held below the scales. That evidence in court is always held before punishment. What's the sword in Scripture that's coming out of the Father's mouth? The Word. She wears that blindfold. You know why she wears that blindfold? Justice must be blind to personal prejudice. It don't matter if you're a rich man, a poor man, you're a foreigner or whatever, you're going to get all judged the same. Go ahead, Brother Rick. In, in ancient times, Torah only 
counted four and Rex equally. The you can look at the code of Hammurabi and the other ancient codes from heathen nations. They had one system for the poor and another system for the wealthy. One for the homeborn and another for the foreign. Only this only this book, the Torah, had the same system for both rich and poor, bond and free, homeborn and foreign. That's right. What do the scales represent? The weighing of evidence. When you get to study in righteousness in your scripture, that usually goes back to lawlessness, lawbreakers, but <coughs> some of it, it'll, it'll trace you back into the Old Testament where it talks about just weight. It's yeah. amazing how all that stuff ties right back into things. Yeah. How can you judge something if you don't have nothing to judge it by? I don't get that. You can't walk around in life thinking you got this little uh this right here. Don't rip it. I got a grace ticket. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be held accountable for your actions. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't walk around in life just doing what you want to and don't think nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It's just like at home when you were with mom and dad. You don't go by the rules, you're going to get punished. Here's another one. First, here's another way he's going to judge you. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Brother Chris, will you read that one loud? Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the reign of Elohim? Do not be deceived. Neither those who force, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor ethnic, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor greedy of gain, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the reign of Elohim. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were set apart, but you were declared right in the name of the Master Yeshua, and by the Spirit of our Elohim. And I know everybody's scared to talk these days, but if you'll go back where it said, uh, Ephenement? You know what that means? That's a man taking on the characteristic characteristics of a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah, and guess what the next one is? It's wrong to be a homosexual. Yes. I don't care what all these other people are saying, and you can get mad at me and you can blast me, but it's in the word. It ain't coming from me. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. Judgment is coming and we are all going to face it. Yes. I know nobody is teaching that these days because they're so scared they're going to offend somebody. Like I've told y'all before, I don't care what people think of me. Judgment is coming. Let me give you another Old Testament of judgment is coming. Psalms 96, 11 through 13. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that fills it resound. Let the fields and everything in them exult. Then all the trees of the forest will shout for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his faithfulness. That's Old Testament. I know some people don't believe in the Old Testament, so let's go on over to Hebrews 9.27. What does that one say? And as it awaits men to die once, and after this judgment. Yeah. 
What's Chuck Missler's favorite saying, Brother Chris? Die once. Yeah, I can't remember it. It's, it's good though. <laughs> save once you uh, you save once you die once. If you not save, you die twice. That's right. Mm-hmm. Means you die this life, mm-hmm. and then you go to the next one. Then you judge. You get to die a second time. Mm-hmm. Let me give you one more in the New Testament. This is the final judgment. That everybody's going to face in Revelations 20. Brother Chris, will you read that very passionately? And I saw a great white throne, and him who was sitting on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from what was written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Sheol gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. And death and Sheol were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. We ought to be screaming at the top of our Now I see. I used to make fun of them when I went to ball games and when I went to other guys. You see all of them, what I used to call people that ain't all there, standing on the side of the road with a little billboard on them. Just coming. Mm-hmm. If I seen them today, I'd, be, I'd go buy them a cooler of water and put it by them and probably go stand out there with them. Mm-hmm. Because they're screaming, they're trying to save somebody's life. And we're not doing it. We're falling short of it. I'm not trying to get on to anybody today. But I'm just sitting here thinking, you have interactions with people every day. And like I said before, the opportunity will present itself. And you've got to be careful. But if you put your faith in the Father, He ain't going to let you down. He'll put words in your mouth. He'll, He'll be able to present it. Yes, sir. We're not going to be only judged on what we do, but we'll be judged on the opportunities that were presented to us, which we took advantage or ignored. And I'm having to repent of that mm-hmm. since you said that. Oh, there's been a many a times at lunch. Man, I should have went. Let me go over and tell this guy. No, that's just me. And about two hours later, you got all the construction worker pulling sheetrock in the clog of crime. Got Peter coming in the back of it. I missed it. That's happened more than one time. Judgment is coming for us and for everybody on this earth. Yeah. Are y'all thankful for where you were brought y'all from? Yes. I know I am. I think back years past, I think, yeah, where he's brought me from. I'm glad there's people in my past that wasn't selfish. Because no matter where you come from, if you've been brought up in this your whole life, somebody shared the gospel with your family. Somebody shared the gospel with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it trickled down. And you're reaping the blessings off of it. That's right. Mm-hmm. I thank the Father for that. Mm-hmm. For someone not even talking to you, just intercessing through prayer for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. I thank the Father. I, like I've told y'all before, I've been brought up in this, but It's countless times he's healed me. I felt him. I was saved as a child. I, you know, in church, you know. But I still can truly remember.
Yeah, I'll go. I'm going. I'll go. I'll go with I'll go with the entire game. Let's go. Let's go Sunday. And you get there. And I'm so grateful I did. Because as soon as you walked in the door, there was something in me. And I know what it was. It was in me. It had been growing over the years. And I couldn't take it no more. And I ran right down to the altar. And I was thanking the Father. Praying to the Father. Father, forgive me. I can't take it no more. I'm ready to just turn it over, Father. I'm giving it all to you. Please wash away my sins, Father. I truly repent of my sins. I'm giving it all to you. I'm truly being repented. Show me mercy. Don't be selfish. Go share the good news with somebody. Yes. If you have trouble talking to people, I've ordered us a whole bunch of little pamphlets back there, there, back there by the box. Everybody take about 10 with you. Mm-hmm. They're just little pamphlets that you can give to somebody if you feel led. <laughs> You can leave them in a the bathroom. You can leave them on the gas station pump. You can pin them on the board of tractor supply. But I'm telling you, somebody will pick it up that needs it. But I encourage you to communicate with people and just give them the basics. Let them know that Yeshua came and died for them. He paid that fine for them. That's all you got to do. Tell them to go to church somewhere. After they do that, they give their life to them and repent, accept the Yeshua into their life. Tell them that there's a plan book. I've got scriptures. I mean, if y'all need one to give to some people, let me know. Or give, give them something. Got them. Don't, you don't even realize. These days, you don't have to give them a scripture. You just tell them there's all these apps on your phone to get a scripture. All they have to do is read the word. That's their plan book. Mm-hmm. That seed will grow in them. Mm-hmm. They might not understand to your level of understanding right now. But like we said earlier, you can't give a baby meat. That's something that I kind of had a problem with at first. I wanted to dump everything on me. As soon as I, it was just like when I learned about all of this, I wanted to just dump it on everybody. I made some mistakes by doing that. (laughs) Start them out with the basics. Start them out like Brother Paul did. We're going to be going over into that in some next few lessons, a few sermons, a few gatherings, a few studies. He became like them. When he was out with the Greeks, he became a Greek. He did whatever he could to set the hook, to get them in there. We don't need to get in all these little pointless debates with everybody. They need to be putting all their time and energy to actually saving somebody rather than arguing and debating and trying to tear somebody down just because they don't believe on this day and I believe on this day. And You could have spent two weeks worth of arguing and ministering to about ten different people that don't have a clue about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's don't be selfish. Let's go spread the good news the way, just like Scripture says. Father, we thank you for today, Father. We thank you for this group of people. Father, we are so blessed from where you have brought us from. Father, right now I speak boldness over us like never before. Father, give us all the wisdom and knowledge that we need, Father. 
because there might not be a tomorrow for that person that they're talking to. Father, let them see the urgency that they need to get to where they need to be or back where they need to be. That they need to believe in the Son. There's no way to the Father except through the Son. Father, we thank you right now. Through Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Does anybody have any uh, does anybody have any prayer requests this week?